Bitcoin values hit a lifetime high. Bitcoins are more expensive than gold. The Winklevoss twins have made a bid for an ETF based on Bitcoins. News like this has been making the headlines for quite some time now. Indian investors have also tried to join the party, hoping to flip a quick buck and make money on Bitcoins and other virtual cryptocurrencies. However, the regulatory framework for Bitcoins in India remains incomplete, with the risk that the story could sar and the headlines may well read Bitcoin. So with India yet to take a definitive stance on the legality or otherwise of Bitcoins, it is time to take stock of where we stand and what are the options before investors who are looking at this as a new asset class. Joining me to today to discuss these issues is NS Napinai, advocate Napinai and Company, Sandeep Goenka, CEO and co-founder of ZebPay, a Bitcoin exchange, as well as Vishal Gupta, founder and CEO, searchtrade.com, a block, uh, blockchain technology company. Thank you very much and welcome to the show. Lots of things to, uh, to discuss, uh, but Ms. Napinai, I'm going to come to you first and ask a very basic question, which many people perhaps already know. Uh, but let's treat this as a, uh, as a show for people who do not understand this. Um, is our Bitcoins legal tender in India? No. It's, the answer is as short as that. Okay. Uh, legal tender necessarily means it has to be currency which has been issued by a sovereign state for it to get legal recognition. Here Bitcoin has been issued by an unknown private entity. Therefore, at that very threshold stage itself, it has stopped being legal tender. Okay, and uh, since it is uh, not legal uh, tender, I'm going to come to both of you, you know, as participants in the actual, uh, let's say, trading or facilitators around that. Um, uh, le le let, me, let me come to you first and ask you uh, about the same uh, point. Uh, many countries uh, uh, across the globe do not recognize Bitcoin as currency. Yet we see that um, there is a significant interest in this. Um, are we operating in a regulatory grey zone uh, as far as the framework in India is concerned? So uh, you ask that is Bitcoin legal tender and yes the answer is no but if, if you ask is Bitcoin legal then it is legal under all existing laws. It's not legal tender, but it is legal, uh, which means that it can be classified as a commodity uh, or a potential asset. Uh, so that's the difference. So again, when you say that Bitcoin is not considered currency in many other countries, again, maybe you're right, but Bitcoin is legal in most countries, including the US, Europe, Japan, Australia, most Western countries, Singapore, Bitcoin is legal. Uh, at, in different countries, it's classified differently because it's very dif uh, difficult to classify Bitcoin in one pigeonhole, just like the way you, you cannot classify the internet as a, a TV broadcasting company right. or a newspaper. Right. Similarly, Bitcoin, it's, it's very difficult to classify just as a currency or commodity or a payment network or a current. It, it's, it's, it's many it's, things it's at a, the same it's time. It's a bit of a uh, gray zone. Vishal, um, uh, one would imagine that recognition is imperative uh, to use Bitcoin as legal tender. Uh, is that so and where do we stand as far as India is concerned? So recognition is important because what we have seen subsequently in India, we've got uh, thousands of investors who are investing in Bitcoin with absolute no clarity about how they would you know, identify Bitcoin in books of accounts. For example, is it a commodity? Is it a stock? Is it currency? Now, when you don't have that clarity, it leads to all kind of taxation issues, right? So one is your income tax and second is your you know, uh, consumption tax or what we call the VAT or the GST. Now, once we do have that clarity, it will make life easier for investors and I think give them a higher level of protection, so to speak. Uh, why don't we have that clarity so far? Well, the fact is that we don't have it. It's only India which has this uh, opacity in those countries where there has been substantial recognition otherwise of interplay of uh, Bitcoin with regular currency. Uh, to go a little bit into the history before I come to the current situation, uh, as he rightly pointed out, US has accepted it as currency, though not as legal tender. They have distinguished it as a financial service. There are many instances where... A financial the, instrument, you mean? Financial services being rendered. Okay, services, services. being rendered. Okay, okay. okay. So, there, uh, for instance, the issue that came up before one court was that uh, would sale of bitcoins be a commodity uh, amenable to GST? Okay. And the court said no, GST would necessarily mean transfer of goods, whereas here it is of a financial service. Okay, this is in the context of the United States, you're saying? Yes. Okay. So given this background, 
uh, one thing that comes out is that you know that bitcoins exist or for that matter I would take it into a broader perspective of cryptocurrency hmm. you know cryptocurrencies exist you you are pushing for a digital uh, world today you would necessarily have to take into account the fact that this is there you have to take a definitive stand on it the law as it stands today if I could clarify that before we move to what we ought to have is that we have RBI, the Reserve Bank of India, deciding what would be acceptable currencies for trading within India. Absolutely, and this is an important point um, for our viewers to take note of. Uh, India's stance, the, uh, what our experts here are telling us that India has not yet taken a definitive stance uh, about Bitcoins, whether they are illegal or legal, what should their nature be, what should their tax treatment be, how do they classify it as an asset class, in which basket it goes in. And you were referring um, to, to the Reserve Bank of India and possibly making reference to the 2013 and 14 circulars go ahead absolutely so in fact uh, the reserve bank has the right to decide the, on the legal tender reserve bank also decides on recognition pursuant to that it had issued a cautionary note in 2013 saying that we have noted that there is a lot of transactions in bitcoins and people have been warned that there has not been a definitive stand Mm. Then the master circular is issued in 2014 for prepaid instruments. So technically one could say that Bitcoin also falls within the open system of prepaid instruments. Mm. In that master circular what RBI has decided is that only banks have the right to issue prepaid instruments which are closed, open or semi-closed. Mm -hmm. So therefore having restricted it to banks what RBI goes on to say is that private parties can issue certain kinds of prepaid instruments. So, uh, uh, um, uh, Sandeep, is, is that how uh, Bitcoin trading, purchasing, selling is happening in India? Is that the framework under which it is happening uh, uh, at the moment? Um, no, not really. Uh, so maybe, uh, you know, the master circular says that uh, uh, this can be issued by banks. But I mean, Bitcoin is not really issued by anybody. It's issued on a decentralized network. Exactly, Everybody, that's the nature what, of the all, technology. All that we are doing is we are um, we are facilitating people who want to buy and sell Bitcoins. Uh, mm. Really, um, so I, I don't think. So what 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 legal framework do you operate under, for instance, if I may ask you that? Uh, so it definitely is uh, a little bit grey, but it, it's a commodity. It's it's. Uh, but you, you know, it's any other. It's, it's not illegal, right? It's not illegal. So for example, uh, you know, Nishad Desa Associates, which is a prominent law firm, has released a white paper uh, which says that Bitcoin is legal under all existing laws, mm. and the RBI also has released warning circulars as she said it's not a, a letter saying that it's illegal it's a warning to the general public hmm. it doesn't mention that bitcoin is illegal hmm. uh, vishal i want to, uh, i want you to come in and while you do that therefore if i were to seek recognition of uh, bitcoins as a holding that i may have or anywhere else in the chain um, uh, I assume because of this grey area that would be difficult at the, this point of time. So it's not difficult, it's about uh, government having greater learning of uh, what Bitcoin is and greater understanding of the technology. Uh, because what is Bitcoin, anyone in government uh, uh, attempting that learning? I presume, I hope so. So, I mean, so you, you wanted to come in, yeah. So I think just recently there was a uh, there was a report on, uh, on another TV channel that there's an inter-ministerial committee which is being set up um, in Delhi. Uh, the RBI for sure knows us. Uh, you know, we've written to the RBI proactively. Uh, and right now they've mentioned that Bitcoin is not a currency. That's, that's the response we've got from them. Uh, nothing else. So absolutely the government is tracking. Uh, it's a new technology. It takes time for them to understand and appreciate what it is. Uh, we are making efforts and I'm, uh, I'm sure they're tracking it. Uh, maybe it's a little too early for them. So, it, so uh, yeah, go ahead. So you it, and then so the problem really is the nature of the beast, right? So it's a peer-to-peer -peer technology. So there is no individual entity or organization or server that runs Bitcoin. So now if you're going to regulate Bitcoin, how are you going to enforce the regulations and what, you know, under what premise are you going to allow people to operate and use, buy, sell? sell you know and do other things with bitcoin or you know maybe create financial instruments so there are all kind of subjects that open up and hopefully you know uh, with communication and uh, learning government can come to a better conclusion at some point yeah. there are two uh, aspects to the question that you asked so how are people uh, dealing in bitcoins today so virtual currency which is what it falls within the broad uh, category is predominantly uh, driven through contractual terms 
So it's issued by a private party. It, the private party sets out the contractual terms which will regulate how you can use this so-called currency. I'm using currency here in a very loose sense here. And those terms decide what the user can put that money to. So the question that I have in mind is that if pretty much any trading activity in India, if any uh, deposit raising in activity in India, if everything is regulated, including commodities, and we saw in a recent example how uh, uh, retrospectively the, yes. uh, the, the regulation was changed, mm -hmm. um, how do bitcoins fit in? In fact, it is high time that they do fit in bitcoins. It would have taken a very simple uh, clarification in the master circular of 2014 to say, yes, bitcoins or similar cryptocurrencies are legal so why and falls some, within so an why open... Why is the RBI uh, not clarifying it? Because it's, it's too small for them and you know, we're okay. waiting for precedents happening in other countries also. So when so you say it is too small, I have to interrupt you. Uh, give us a sense of volumes. Does anyone have data about what is the total sort of bitcoin purchase, selling, trading volume in India? So we have an exchange and I mean, I am trying to be modest, but I think we are one of the leading exchanges in India uh, and we do about... 200 crores worth of uh, trade in a month. So uh, I think as of right now, it's a 2000 crore uh, uh, annual industry, which was only 200 crores last year. So I think this is the first year where it even it makes sense for the regulators to have a look at it. And also coming to the point that how users should use it and all. I mean, I, I think all our users are very simple. You can uh, buy and sell Bitcoins and uh, just simply show it as an asset on your books and pay short term or long term capital gain when you sell Bitcoins. That's what all our chartered accounts and CAs and all the advice that we've so, got. So, uh, so we the do. people so, who are doing that, I imagine people would have been doing that. Yes. Uh, how is the tax uh, treatment happening? The short, You pay short term and long term capital gain depending upon the period. No more questions asked by the taxman. Uh, well, I think it's the first year where people would be declaring it. <laughs> no, merely because you are being taxed for a particular uh, transaction does not give it legality or otherwise. Okay. I'm not saying that it is illegal. I'm just saying that that is not the threshold or the uh, basis on which you decide this. You have to go by specific regulations which are dealing with virtual so, so, so my, my, my point here is from 200 to 2000 a growth of 10 uh, X yes, in X. one yes. year yes. is not a small number so while Sandeep said it's probably uh, small for the RBI's attention it has been caught up with so many other things I think 2000 crore is not a small number certainly not so, and if it is coming in small uh, transactions that means that a large number of Indians are involved in it so it is high time yeah, that they regulate it. So the then. problem really is that that's really why we ask the question about the legality of Bitcoin. Because now, like I mentioned earlier, you got so many people, you've got some level of Bitcoin holding, and they have absolutely no idea, you know, where they stand in terms of their investment. And so the term legality or illegality is, that, I mean, that's where it originates out of. That's fascinating. People who are putting in money. And we'll come to the prices later on. Have no idea of what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, if I may just quickly add over here, since this was such a complex issue, I have actually addressed oh, yeah, it in we can my see book, uh, 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 Technology uh, uh, Laws Decoded, uh, yeah, sure. which is going to be out in the market. So, so uh, let's let's try and decode that in the, in the next available uh, uh, you know time absolutely. that we have. The next subject that we want to bring up um, for discussion is that we have heard the numbers from uh, people who know this very well, 2000 crore, uh, if that were to be uh, uh, you know, indexed over our population, it is absolutely nothing. But it is a significant amount of money and therefore we ask the question, should you say yes or no to bitcoins? Um, if they are not a substitute for normal currency, uh, the question that therefore arises is how are the prices being discovered let's assume for a moment that there is nothing wrong uh, uh, in trading buying selling doing whatever you want to do with your money whether it be bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency how are bitcoin prices being discovered so the bitcoin prices are discovered like price of any other commodities are discovered now just because the volumes are lower just like you know you had you know 50s and 60s where the oil price were really volatile the consumption was low so you know little larger purchase would you know fluctuate the price dramatically so similarly in bitcoin because still a new commodity 
or a system that people are working with, and the amount of capital that moves is pro probably about two hundred fifty million dollars worth of Bitcoin get traded around the world today. So the two hundred fifty million per day. Per, per, day. Per, day. per day. Okay. Now that essentially essentially means that any uh, large investor who walks in with ten or fifteen million can have a dramatic impact by either buying or selling on the price of Bitcoin. So as the volume grows, as the market capitalization grows, you will see more stability in price of Bitcoin over time. So doesn't it uh, raise the next question, um, uh, which some people have expressed? Um, uh, concerns of price manipulation are they valid and the second point really that comes to mind is that uh, does it mean that there is need for a central authority or a oversight mechanism uh, both from a point of view of ensuring fair trading protection of consumer rights and grievance redressal so you know the, uh, uh, when you consider about like things like insider trading which is applicable to stock uh, prices uh, you know in Bitcoin uh, the news is out there open for everybody okay right. so if you think that the prices are manipulated you you manipulated you have the option of not to participate in the market okay. so prices are determined on exchanges like ours where demand and supply meet and the common prices uh, determined and it happens globally on exchanges worldwide uh, I don't think uh, there is any need because there is no hidden information in the Bitcoin world which somebody would have or True. somebody so would what not. what you seem to be suggesting is that if someone is buying a particular commodity or a good on an e-commerce website and there is a price listed, it is for him or her to buy or not buy. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, you wanted to yeah I wanted to come in on a slightly uh, different angle. The difficulty with regulating something like Bitcoin is of jurisdiction or territoriality. So it's not bound by one territory. So who is going to regulate it then? So, you know, and so who the, are you going to regulate? Because even the person who has but, created but isn't this, that quite simple to answer? Sorry, isn't it simple to answer? Because uh, there are asset classes in, in which Indians sitting in India, domiciled in India for tax and other purposes, are participating, uh, buying and selling contracts. Yes. Uh, and futures in so, overseas domains. So therefore, that is the transaction which you are regulating and not the product itself. So the, there, are, gold. there are two challenges here, right? So one is, can we frame regulations? So one is creating a regulation and second is enforcing the regulation. So I think creating the regulation is the easy part enforcing of those regulations because we are moving away from the physical world so, and moving so, into digital but, but world. you make the point that we, we first need to create that regulation right Absolutely. you are not saying it has to be unregulated so you cannot ever regulate bitcoin itself what you want to no. regulate is businesses who work with bitcoin yes, yes. it's just the like transaction you that gold. you would have to necessarily regulate. absolutely just like you cannot regulate gold but you would regulate gold businesses right and what about redresser uh, one other aspect which you raised is about this central uh, uh, agency. Oversight. So the beauty about Bitcoin and that is something which everybody has consensus over is the technology which drives, this call, drives it called blockchain technology. Yes. So it's so trustworthy that banks today want to adopt it. Okay, so so there is no question of a false trade or a or a mistaken so punch I mean, in which causes you, so which so then so needs to be settled. So there are two okay. layers here. So one, you have the default blockchain layer, which of course is completely trust based, and there is nothing that can go wrong because there are about three hundred and forty thousand machines actively connected to the network, and. 50, as long as 51% of those machines don't agree on something, nothing gets done. Okay. And the second part is businesses that create a second layer which allow you know users to come and buy or sell Bitcoin and how they go about managing their business and that's essentially where the regulations are primarily required. So, you know. Yeah, go ahead. No, so according to me, all existing uh, laws take care of, uh, you know, if, if any businesses, Bitcoin businesses, like for example, ours, uh, falter, existing regulation is enough to keep us in check. You know, if we do not deliver bitcoins, for example, but, if we but do won't, won't a proper regulatory framework and a stamp of approval yeah. from the, let's say, the Reserve Bank of India, backed by the uh, the fiscal policy administrators, uh, mean that uh, instead of 10x, you could see a 100x jump in volume? Absolutely. I mean, we are waiting for that. We are advocating for that. And there are uh, there are. Already How are you advocating? Are you guys meeting the government, the RBI? What are you guys so, doing? So there? in all fintech events, we are there, and we are uh, you know proactively saying that we are. This is a volume so that we attract attention we are of course writing to all the agencies rbi knows us we, we you know we've been they know we exist um, and we are trying to meet all regulators and authorities possible at the right time i think they were really busy over the last few months and we were really small but i i think the time is kind of now well uh, that that is true <laughs> they were demonetizing our our currency uh, on that point let's let's take a look at another uh, interesting aspect and this is uh, bitcoin volumes by markets and by currency uh, across the world uh, 
um, uh, Sandeep here spoke about um, his uh, agency and also the fact that uh, volumes in India at, are around at 2,000 2, crore. But let's take a look at some of these. Uh, the Japanese and, um, uh, you know, uh, perhaps it is just a, a, a factor of the, uh, of, of the volume of money that they have surplus and and the negative interest rate scenario the japanese exchange um, has the highest percentage by volume of total bitcoin uh, around 27 percent if you were to take the most recently available uh, data by volume and then if you look at um, the, the us uh, uh, dollar if you look at the us it's it's around 22 percent if you aggregate it across um, multiple exchanges in the united states by by uh, currency, again, it's the yen uh, which dominates, followed by the U.S. dollar, and then um, the uh, the euro and the yuan also, which is perhaps an expression of of the availability of surpluses and the uh, the chase for high returns, uh, if I may say, uh, that people have. That brings me to another point, and this is price volatility. Uh, interesting bit of data that is uh, publicly available, which says that around 2011. Uh, the the uh, each bitcoin was uh, you know available at five dollars in a couple of years after that it went to almost thousand dollars by early 2015 it fell to two hundred dollars fourth of january 2017 it went up to uh, eleven hundred forty dollars a week later it was down again by thirty percent now I i'm going to come to you on this this doesn't uh, tell me this kind of volatility doesn't tell me that this is a safe asset class if i was in the business of giving any tips and recommendations which i am not completely i would say stay away so what is that out of uh, you know all the data that you mentioned i'm just proud to say that zepay has uh, is now among the top 30 exchanges in the world and we are targeting to be among the top 10 really get india on the radar uh, uh, you know the bitcoin radar out there um, the, the, the second thing is uh, you know you're i'm not also advocating you should not invest in anything which you don't understand but bitcoin has been the best performing asset every year except one year that is 2014 since its invention so i think it's for the users to take a call the volatility that you expressed as vishal mentioned earlier is because in a couple of years back bitcoin was a very small uh, market cap asset you know it was first a million dollar industry then 100 million dollars as of right now it's about between 16 to 20 billion dollars the volatility index was 15 so if you see btc wall dot info it's a it's a website which uh, you know you can uh, see the volatility from there it went down all the way to two so over the almost the last half of the or, or the second half of the last year it was down to two right now it's again back to about three to four it's not as volatile as you kind of make out to be it's now as volatile as some of the more volatile currency pairs out there maybe some latin american currencies out there uh, still it's just a 20 billion dollar industry once it becomes a 200 billion dollar industry maybe a 2 trillion dollar industry the volatility will come down as more players get involved in the market so shall isn't this oh, oh you go ahead I'll so this is what we got to understand there are only going to be 21 million bitcoins that are ever going to ex exist and 16.5 million them of them have already been mined so as Which the number my of next question exactly so mm -hmm. now what we end up is in a situation is that because there is limited resource and as more and more users or you know uh, investors come on board and they want to own a piece of bitcoin so there is greater demand for lesser commodity and the, so so in price discovery then again uh, I'm, I'm challenging you on this you guys know it better price discovery can never be fundamentally true in such a market where the uh, the end product volume is already known so that that's pretty much the case for all commodities on the planet that's for gold as well. You almost know the amount of gold that's there and which will be mined every year. Uh, you know. The absolute data available amount of gold that can be mined and is mined and will this be mined. And oil actually. Uh, so so, so if the that, upper limit is being reached, prices will only rise therefore. That's, it, that's the whole point. So the, well, that's a fundamental thing. But then that thesis. is why you have regulations. So That is why uh, government decides how much can be mined in a particular way and how is it to be sold there is some level of stability that a legal tender provides but then if if the so, volume is known the the only thing that will change is value the, the volume of the product is already known exactly and yes. bitcoin is divisible up to eight decimals so you mm -hmm. can go up to one two three four five six seven point one two three four five six seven eight bitcoin so they're extremely divisible so as more and more people want to own bitcoin and, and you know the desirability of owning maybe some bitcoin increases amongst users the prices in my opinion 
theoretically speaking, are likely to keep rising. Absolutely. So but you then, can own ZP, you can own a fraction of a Bitcoin, you know, I mean, with any exchange. Well, at these prices, most certainly <laughs> only fractions. <laughs> yes, but there is another bit of concern on the aspect of Bitcoins being completely frozen hmm. in terms of volume. I, I'm a little skeptical about it because the way Bitcoins have evolved have been by some Bitcoins being released periodically hmm. for free. No. Or for certain, uh, uh, no, no, that's not the yeah. case. So we have so, something called we call as a block discovery. Yes. So put a very simple in a one-minute analogy. So if there was a cricket match and you had one scorekeeper, and if the scorekeeper were to make a mistake, the result of the match could you know just completely go kaput. So how do you solve that problem? You put instead of one, eleven scorekeepers. Now there is a problem. Why would eleven scorekeepers participate? So you have to create an incentive. So you, what Bitcoin has done is it created a system where eleven scorekeepers come together, and at the end of each over. Whoever discovers the you know master score sheet is the one who's going to be rewarded some bitcoins, and that's how bitcoins come into existence. Right. And this is the process that is called as mining, actually. Absolutely. And therefore, and it cannot be claimed that it is frozen, really. Right. So yes. you have here a situation where you have something called a, which they want to call a currency, which can keep coming into being. As in but when the person who has the only... right to create it can bring it out into the open. So it's an unknown person yeah, out quickly, there. Quickly, quickly. So this will go on until the number 21 million is going to be reached. Now how do we assure that number 21 is going to remain 21? Because we, earlier I said 340,000 machines running the same software. Just like you have your application mobile phone, it can't be updated until you decide it to. So think of that code or software as a rule book that everybody's accepted. And now, I, 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 as long as, as long as if I can create my own version of blockchain for Bitcoin and you, I can take the number from 21 to 25 million, but I will have to get 51% of uh, miners or witnesses to agree to that change for that number to go from 21 to 25. Fascinating stuff. Sandeep, the last word to you completely. No, I, yeah, these are, these are all technical things which I think you, I, I kind of believe that as a user, I think you need to be absolutely rest assured that there will be a limited number. Right. Uh, and we had a, a monetary system which was based on gold for 5,000 years, which worked fantastically. And Bitcoin, in some way, is more similar to that monetary system. That's all. So I'm that's saying. the world of cryptocurrencies for you. Um, if you are someone who's been looking at Bitcoins, here was a ready reckoner, short ready reckoner as to what where it stands and what you can do. And if you're looking for uh, buying Bitcoins or at least the fractions of it. Uh, do take a chance, but keep all the risks in mind as you chase higher rewards. With that, it's a wrap on this show. Thank you for watching.